Are you looking to understand the difference in due diligence and due care as you prepare for the CISSP exam? The simplest way to think about due diligence and due care is this. Due diligence comes before, due care comes after. If you just remember that, you'll be pretty good off. But let's dig into that a little bit. Let's use an example of buying a car. If I'm going to exercise due diligence while buying a car, I am going to do research before I buy a car to figure out what kind of car is good, which kind of cars are the most safe, which ones have the best gas mileage, which ones are the best for my family and my needs. I am doing due diligence before I buy the car. Once I buy the car, I also have to not be negligent, which is the whole essence of due diligence and due care is avoiding negligence, right? I still have to not be negligent even after I purchase the car. And that is where due care comes into play. Due care is once I made the purchase, the after, am I taking all the steps that a reasonable or prudent person would take to not be negligent? We'll get to what negligence and reasonable is here in a second, but due care. What are the things I would do for due care? I would regularly change my oil. I would regularly change my tires. All of the things that are a reasonable person would do to maintain their car. Does that mean I'm going to wax it and get a new paint job every three months? Probably not because that is beyond what a reasonable person would do. Okay. So due diligence is what you do before due care is what you do after. So I mentioned due care being that you take the steps that a reasonable person would take to avoid negligence. Okay. When that comes to building a security program, are you taking the reasonable steps due diligence before you initiate on the security program? Did you do a risk assessment, figure out where your risks are? If this is a, say a merger and an acquisition, did you do a risk assessment? Did you do penetration testing on the company that you're thinking about buying? The th things that happen before due care is, am I properly installing firewalls? Do I have properly trained personnel? Are they taking the proper steps that an individual, a reasonable person would do, but what is reasonable? And the basis for what we would call reasonable today goes all the way back to a court case in the 1830s. The case became known as the U.S. prudent person rule. Some people believe it's one of the most important cases and decisions given in regards to tort law tort being avoiding negligence, which is something we have to do in information security. We cannot be negligent with people's data. So the case was this, an individual saw two dogs fighting. He went to break up the fight and to do so, he picked up a stick and he picked it up to swing at the dogs to break the fight up and doing so he did not realize there was a man directly behind him. He hit the man, injured him and caused severe injuries to that individual. And in that case, the courts establish what reasonable and prudent means. Basically reasonable and prudent mean the steps that a normal person would take in the conditions and in those circumstances, the average individual, there was another case that further explained what reasonable care is quick side note. I am not an attorney, so this is not legal counsel. So another court case further expounded and helps us understand what reasonable care is. There was an individual, a woman came from Spain back in the 1800s and she was staying in Boston. Boston had coal pits at the front of the house where the coal companies would deliver coal into these pits. The homeowners would, could then go and move that further into their basements or whatever cellars, and they would use them to warm the houses. Well, this lady from Spain did not know that one of these pits was there and she fell into it. She sued the homeowner. And the courts have held that the average Bostonian where this incident happened, didn't know that the coal holes were there, the coal pits, holes, whatever you want to call them. So the homeowner was not liable in that case, but there's a very important caveat to this. And this is of a particular importance to us, you as an information security professional, the prudent person rule says that again, like we mentioned the, what an average person knows, however, if an individual knows more than the average person, they are held more accountable. And this comes into play with skilled professionals. So for an example, if a roofer installs a roof incorrectly, even though the average person would not know how to install it correctly, because of his skill and knowledge, this roofer should know how to install that roof correctly. And he would be more liable and more accountable and have more room for negligence if he did not install that correctly. 
And all of that takes us back to due care. Due care basically is, are you taking the proper steps that the ordinary person would do or an ordinary person with your skill set when it comes to information security, of course, to avoid risk? Avoiding risk goes back to due diligence. Did you do your research? Did you understand what risks are and avoid them from the outset and then practice due care in the implementation of what you decide to move forward with? So that wraps up this session of the CISSP Study Corner. This is a new series I'm trying out for individuals studying for the CISSP, CISOs, IT leaders, people at companies trying to build information security programs and incorporate secure principles. If you like it, leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and let me know what you would like to see.